All right, I think we got it. Okay, so uh, eat to beat diabetes. So thank you for coming. This is important stuff, and we're gonna try to make it fun. And hopefully, you take away something, at least one thing that you can apply to make your life better and make um, outcomes better for you. Um, all right. So okay. So first things first. And if anybody sees anything. Um, that they would like, just type in the chat box and I'll try to keep watching that. So here's my name. My name is Andrea Nikolai and I work for the University of Florida in the Extension in Polk County. And I'm the Family and Consumer Sciences agent. So I teach food and nutrition and I'm also a registered dietitian. Okay, so if you are, um, I muted everybody right now. So I will, I can unmute you at the end and you can ask questions and things like that. But in the meantime, if you'd like to type something in the chat box, I'll try to watch that for comments and things like that, or if you have any problems. So how you get to that is there's uh, these dots on the bottom right side, and you can just click on it. It might say more. You can kind of hover over the bottom to get all the tools to show up. And then when you click on it, you can see there's a chat box feature, and you can type something in there if you'd like. So that's an option. All right, and then after this, I have a short evaluation and I'll email it to you guys. And if you would do it, I would love it. It really does help me. I look at the comments and you know, then I know kind of what wasn't clear to people. And then I could go faster on parts where people are bored, you know, so then just in future presentations, I'll kind of get what you guys need better. Okay. And then, um, so just a few things about diabetes, I guess. Um, we're gonna go over today is just in our county, what we have managing diabetes, food and diabetes, what foods raise your blood sugar, and then we'll identify the carbohydrates, right? And how to do meal planning then. And so this, I know this doesn't maybe sound really exciting, but we're gonna make it exciting. So it's like the diabetes part, mostly about the food. So there's definite important parts about checking your feet and things like that, but we're gonna focus on the food part and what you can eat because that's a big, big part of it. So just um, some fun facts, I guess, or maybe not fun facts, but so you know, according to the um, county health assessment then, so diabetes in Polk County were higher than the state, right? So that's why I kind of try to really focus on it here because I was, you know, really want to get our numbers down. And then we have higher hospitalization rates than most other counties, which is kind of alarming. Um, so this is all, you know, besides COVID, but, um, and then the healthcare cost for person, a person who has diabetes is about 2.3 times higher as a person who doesn't. So that's pretty significant. So, hey, if we can get diabetes under control, uh, we'll save um, you guys lots of money. So this will be good. And so if you can kind of see, it's interesting, you can see our county there in the dark blue. And so that's kind of where the higher percentages are just kind of interesting it's like that rural belt almost so i guess just something to be aware of and so uh don't think about moving to other counties we need you here but we'll just try to get it down so um another thing top five causes of death in polk county so you guys might know these sometimes in my classes people um guess them just they know them all other times you know it just you know it's hard i i don't think Without studying, you know, I guess it's just sometimes hard to know. So heart disease is number one and cancer is number two. And so then chronic lower respiratory disease, and that's a little bit different in our county than other counties, and then stroke and unintentional injury. So that would be things like car accident. So what I'm trying to get across here is that the top four have to do with diet. So if we we could really bring our risk of dying down. So, um, and then we're driving less now. So, hey, maybe <laughs> we'll all be alive for a long time. Um, so just, you know, sometimes people are like, well, what about diabetes? You know, why are we talking about that if it's not even on the top five? And so most people with diabetes, they actually die of heart disease. So that's just, I guess, something to keep in mind. And diabetes by itself is number six for us. Number seven is Alzheimer's disease, believe it or not. So, okay. So the goal of uh, diabetes management 
So our goal really overall is just to try to keep your blood sugar levels at a normal or near normal levels, right? Um, and the more you can do this, the better control you'll be and the healthier your body will be. And this is, so when you get out of that normal or near normal levels, that's when um, you start having the too much sugar in your bloodstream. And somebody told me once, it's kind of like having sticky blood. You know, like the blood can't move as well if it's sticky, right? You know, it has all this sugar. And so it's hard for it to get from the heart to the rest of the body. And so that can be kind of why you start having feet problems, problems with your feet and problems with your eyes and then problems with your brain and things like that because um, there's so much sugar, it's like hard, you know, it's not able to get the blood up there. So that's why you really want to keep it, um, keep it under control. Because when you start not even being able to feel your feet and things like that, that's a sign that, you know, we can do this. We need to make some changes. And you can make some changes, which is, you know, why I'm here and I'm going to show you you can. And so just general goal, if you guys check your blood sugar, which you should, but just idea before your meal, like a great range for a diabetic would be 70 to 130. And then two hours after a meal, if you check your blood sugar, it should be less than 180. Now, everybody's slightly different and your doctor will have different goals for you, but these are our goals overall. And then your A1C, the goal for a diabetic is under seven. And so if you can get under seven, that is awesome. And so just the closer you can get, even by moving just a little bit, like points, it really makes a difference on your body. So if you can try, um, yeah, it's amazing what it can do, okay? So really try to get that down. So the hemoglobin A1C, if your doctor talks about that, that's the average of your blood glucose over three months. So you know how you could go in and have a candy bar right before you went to the doctor's office and they check your blood sugar and they're like, it's high. And you're like, I know it's high. I just had a candy bar. <laughs> and so then what the hemoglobin A1C does is it tells you, it kind of tells you, tells the doctor how you've been doing for the last three months by on average. So it like, he'll know basically if you have a candy bar all the time or if it was just an occasional thing. So that's why the hemoglobin is a great measure. So that's almost sometimes better than the blood sugar, but the blood sugar will tell you like day by day, like how foods affect you. So then you'll be able to know how to get the A1C in the good, good range. Okay, and then how is diabetes controlled? So you might wonder, well, okay, so I have the blood sugar is not right. And uh, you know, it just, uh, things aren't going well. My hemoglobin's high. So there's three things that uh, can affect this, right? So it's what you eat, your activity, and then your medication. So if we can change any of these, something's gonna happen that'll make it better. Um, if you change them to a, you know, good, good, good thing. So it's like a three-legged stool, three-legged stool. So you can do different things like physical activity usually lowers your blood sugar. So, you know, if you're having a high blood sugar and you're just like, this is alarming, maybe you take a walk, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's interesting. But what you eat then, so what we'll focus on today. And then medication, you know, it's not bad. If it can get you in that range, that's really, your, your body will love that. And that's way more, way important, okay? So sometimes people don't take their medicine. And you know, if you're confused on why you're on it, ask your doctor because he should know. Um, and you know, ask your pharmacists too, you know, are some of these contradicting? Because sometimes when you have so many doctors, you have a lot going on. But these are the three things in summary. So why is diet important? So eating that consistent amount of food every day and then taking those medications can really improve your blood sugar. Like really, and that's why I talk about it. So it decreases the risk of diabetes like coronary artery disease, kidney disease, nerve damage. And if you see a dietitian, a registered dietitian, they can help you create a personalized food plan. So that's, um, it's good to know you got somebody else watching your back. So your calories then, starting to talk about food, they come from four different things. So the only way you can get calories, which are energy, is if you eat carbohydrates, fat, protein, or alcohol. So if a food does not have those in there, it's not gonna have any calories. So you know how coffee, it doesn't have any fat, 
It doesn't have any protein. There's no alcohol in coffee and no carbohydrates. So it doesn't give you any calories either. And so that's the same thing with salt. Salt doesn't have any fat, protein, alcohol, or carbohydrates. So it doesn't have any calories. Um, so the only things that would affect your blood sugar somehow, maybe, would be the things above there. And each of those things affected differently, okay? So the main one that we're gonna worry about today is carbohydrates. Because each of the foods, they're made up of usually a little bit of each of those, but the major, or majority of the food is usually made up of one. So that's why we can categorize them. So like um, peanut butter, for instance, it is mostly like fat and protein, but it does have a little bit of carbohydrates. But most foods you can highlight into just one section. So protein and fat are peanut butters. And so that's kind of where it would be. And so um, alcohol, so carbohydrates then, just to get a general overview, carbohydrates are the one we're gonna worry about. And then fat and protein, they do minimal on your blood sugar. And then alcohol, that one is kind of scary. So it can, can cause your blood sugar to go up, but then if you're drinking a lot or um, certain times, I guess, depending on the alcohol, it can also cause you to plummet. And so that's why just watching what you're eating with drinking would be really important. Okay, so carbohydrates. So which foods have carbohydrates? Because these are the foods that affect your blood sugar the most, okay? So we're just gonna try to figure out what things have your carbohydrates so you know then when you eat them, you know, um, your blood sugar might go up. And that can be good, because you, you don't want your blood sugar too low either, and you need energy, which carbohydrates give you. So I'm gonna call them carbs, because um, that's uh, just abbreviation for carbohydrates. So foods that have carbohydrates. So what do you guys think, right? Um, sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, it's like everything. So it's starches, it's all the breads, the cereals, the crackers. You guys get that. Everyone always is like, rice, cereal, bread, right? And then there's the starchy vegetables too. So these also have carbohydrates, and sometimes people forget about those. So potatoes, um, they're a starchy vegetable, and they have carbohydrates. And corn, if you think about it, you know, corn is a grain, right? It grows in the field, and, um, you know, so it is definitely a carbohydrate. You can make cornbread. And then peas, same kind of thing, and beans too. So I want, you, I want to make sure you guys know, you know, none of these foods are bad for you. It's just that you just know then when you eat them, um, maybe we can balance them with something who, that doesn't have a lot of carbohydrates, okay? So all fruit and fruit juices. So you know fruit and fruit juices have sugar. So sugar is a type of carbohydrate. So anything with sugar has, um, has carbohydrates. So so sometimes people who have diabetes look at the nutrition label and they just look at the sugar. So you can't do that. You gotta look at the whole carbohydrates too because sometimes foods like pasta might not have any sugar, but it still has carbohydrates, so. Okay, all milk and yogurt. And so that's a, another one that's important. And sometimes we forget about that one also. It's just that milk and yogurt, they have a natural carbohydrate when you milk a cow it has um, natural sugar in it. So it can be uh, nice, it gives it a little bit of sweetness, but it's called lactose actually. So you might've heard of somebody being lactose intolerant, just they're intolerant to that milk sugar. And then there's the sweets and you guys might've gotten that one too. So that's like the candy, that, that Snickers bar that you had before the doctor's office, cake and then ice cream, things like that and donuts. Um, so I think the main ones, you know, just remember the starches, starchy foods, anything with sugars, and then the starchy vegetables. And you guys got this. So um, just to kind of help, sometimes pictures are really nice. And I had a friend and he took some great pictures for me. Um, he was getting all stuff out of his cupboards and things like that. Just, you know, could kind of give you an idea, right? So these are just general foods with carbohydrates. So if you look in your fridge, you know, the bread that has it, the cereal, you know, the beans, he has baked beans there, potatoes, you know, the yogurt, the um, orange juice, and some sweets. And so just breaking it down then, all the grains are going to have carbohydrates. So don't forget about like the tortilla shells and things like that, right? Um, your pancake mixes, everything like that would have them. 
and then all your fruits, right? Whether they're fresh, frozen, canned, or juiced. And just saying a note about that too, you know, sometimes people are like, well, why do you even, you know, I guess the apple and things like that, those things have more fiber and that slows down your blood sugar. So that's why um, dietitians and why they're important to have the whole ones when you can, okay? So the juice sometimes is okay. I say can, sometimes okay too, but you really, you just want to try to get the whole fruit when you can to get all that fiber. Um, so make sure to keep that in mind because that'll, so fruit we know raises your blood sugar, but if you have the fiber with it, it'll go slower. So that's the key. And so, and it also won't go up as high. So that's why you want, fiber is your friend. So anybody with diabetes or without diabetes, it's your friend, help you lose weight too, <laughs> if you need that. So dairy, um, no fiber in this, and but it does raise your blood sugar. And so there's things like um, butter and sour cream and cream cheese and heavy whipping cream. Like those things are so much fat that they don't even have any carbohydrates. So the things that I, we're worried about more are just like your milk, your ice cream, and then yogurt, I would say. So then the dairy, sweets, and juice, that would be another one, the sweets and juice, you got that. And then um, the starchy vegetables. So sometimes this is hard for people to remember, but if you can remember potatoes, so that'd be like potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, beans, so it's like the dry beans or peas, uh, corn, beans, butternut, other squashes. So the squashes, like the winter squashes. Summer squash hardly has any carbohydrates, but it's the ones from kind of like Minnesota and North, North Country, um, if you guys are from the North area. So butternut and acorn squashes, they have some more carbohydrates. Okay, so let's think here. And just making sure then to know starchy vegetables, they have a lot of fiber. So, you know, they, they're way better than having Snickers bars, right? For if you're going to have carbohydrates, that's why these are great foods. Like beans, think about how much fiber they have, right? A, a lot. And so that will help your blood sugar not go up as much. So just here's um, kind of a, another picture to show you. So sometimes people compare a serving of carbohydrates to equal to 15 grams. You might have heard a doctor talk about that. So a piece of bread is actually about 15 grams of carbohydrates. So you can compare, so you can look on the right there and those vegetable servings each have about 15 grams of carbohydrates in them. So you can kind of see like what a serving size would be. And then on the left side, those are the non-starchy vegetables and they have way, way, way less carbohydrates. So it's like all the other vegetables we didn't talk about. So those foods are like, um, you know, even those baby corns in the can, they don't have as many carbohydrates. I don't know why. Um, but asparagus, artichokes, uh, beans, like green beans, beets, I would say cabbage, like anything leafy goes on the left side as non-starchy. So cauliflower. So I'm talking about foods that will hardly raise your blood sugar unless you eat a vast quantity. Okay. So things like uh, celery, carrots, peppers, onions, um, like the summer squash, so zucchini, the yellow squash, even spaghetti squash, I would say would go on the left side. Definitely tomatoes, water chestnuts, turnips, um, sugar snap peas. So if you get the sugar snap kind, they would go over there. Okra, if you guys like those, mushrooms, leeks, kohlrabi. Um, I had a cheat sheet list over here, so <laughs> that's how I'm getting these so fast. Usually if we were in a classroom, I'd drill you guys, ask you what you thought. Okay, so just um, to get a quick idea, approximately 15 grams of carbohydrates can be found in these different things. And this is a really small picture, but I just kind of wanted you to know just to compare. So like a piece of bread has 15, you know, a small pita has 15, a cup of yogurt has about 15, and like a really small banana or like half a banana would equal 15. So that's how you can kind of compare different things. So if you have, you know, three bananas in the morning, that's almost equal to three slices of bread or four maybe. And so um, just kind of knowing that can kind of help you get a general idea. And Kelly, I see your question now. Um, yeah, okay. So Kelly just um, chatted in there quick. I just addressed that, but she was told not to eat any fruit after 2 p.m. 
due to increasing your blood sugar. Is that true? So that might be, you know, I'm not a doctor and you might have a reason with your medicine if you're on medicine for doing that. But I would say really the more important thing is just trying to get the same amount over the, like the day, amount over the time of day. So unless you're on a certain medicine, I would say, you know, um, on the general person, um, it would be fine probably to have fruit. It would be fine to have fruit after that time. But I would say, you know, I'd want to consult with your doctor and just see if he had a reason for saying that. So that's a good point. Um, okay, so which foods don't have carbohydrates? So the reason I'm going through this is just I want you to know how to balance your plate, right? So it's like if you can put carbohydrates on one side and the other foods on one side or do about half and half, that'll get you um, good to go with your blood sugar overall, okay? So that's where I want you to go. So um, here are some foods that don't have a lot of carbohydrates. So that's the meat and the meat substitutes. So like say I gave um, Barbara a whole uh, thing of bacon right away in the morning. I checked her blood sugar before she ate it and I checked it after she ate it. Her blood sugar should not go up at all. You know, whereas if I had checked it before like something like Wheaties and then after Wheaties, it would go up. So things like meats, like turkey, chicken, you know, um, fish, all those things, even eggs, and then cheese, because it's so much fat and protein, those things shouldn't raise your blood sugar. And if you look at the label, they shouldn't have any carbohydrates either. So these foods, like if you have a low carbohydrate, um, you know, you're feeling dizzy and you're, you're low, you know, you wouldn't want to grab a piece of turkey, you know, that probably wouldn't help you. You know, it'd be great to have that turkey maybe with some orange juice or something like that to get your blood sugar up and stabilize it, you know, because we're balancing it out um, and having that snack later. But the more important thing would be to get your sugar up. So fats and oils don't have it either. So if I gave you, you know, a stick of butter, you know, and you ate it before and after, that wouldn't affect your blood sugar. And so just knowing these things um, can help you, I guess, maybe. And so non-starchy vegetables, these are our friends too because they have little impact on your blood sugar levels. So, you know, if you have high blood sugar and you're hungry, like these would be great snacks, right? Um, you know, maybe you could have like a piece of cheese or a piece of turkey with um, some, um, I guess, a, like a bell pepper slice or some carrots maybe, or you could have carrots with, um, yeah, carrots, uh, cheesy carrots. <laughs> you can kind of maybe get the idea. But just all those things we talked about, um, asparagus, that would be asparagus, you know, wrapped it with, in a piece of turkey, that would be a good snack. Um, celery with peanut butter would be a good snack. Those things, they don't have an effect on your blood sugar very much. So just um, if you're hungry, those things would be great to have. So if you eat a, a really, really lot, like um, maybe a three huge handfuls of them, you might have to count them as counting some carbohydrates because some of them have a smaller amount. Okay, so moving on, just quick pictures. Just here, these are foods that don't affect your blood sugar. So it's the meats and then the fats, you know, they really don't affect it very much. So if you have something like, um, you know, an egg in the morning, right? If you have an egg in the morning, and you use olive oil, a little bit of olive oil or Pam cooking spray, and you put cheese on it, you know, you're not having hardly, you know, you're having nothing that will affect your blood sugar. It'll have a lot of protein, and that can help stabilize your blood sugar. Um, and same with the fat can help do the same thing. But um, these foods wouldn't get it up at all. So it would be okay maybe if you had diabetes to have a little carbohydrates with that egg. So maybe you could have an English muffin or have one piece of bread, an open face sandwich, something like that. So here's just, this is why it's confusing for people. So I wouldn't have a job if this was really easy. So I just wanted to show you guys, it's annoying because some foods, they fall into multiple groups. You see that? So it's not like it's totally obvious. So it's like, you know how beans, they're a good source of protein, but they also have carbohydrates. So it's kind of confusing for people. You're like, well, where do they go? And some of them are more off, uh, obvious than others, but I just wanted to show you guys, it's not, it's sometimes, you know, not really, really easy. So don't worry if you can't get this, but what I'm trying to do is make it easy. And so here's why I'm talking to you about all this right now. 
So even if you forget kind of what I said at the beginning, I guess I kind of need to remember a little bit, but just trying to remember on the right side there is the diabetic plate. And I also would say that this plate would be great for anybody who's just looking to be extra healthy or trying to maybe make sure to manage their weight. It's because half of that plate, whatever, half of whatever you're eating is filled with non-starchy vegetables. Now, sometimes people are like, why do I even eat these? You know, they don't even have any calories hardly, you know, um, you know, just, I don't know. I look at a can of green beans and there's not really a lot of nutrients. Well, there's a lot of different things in each of those um, things. Each of those different colors, they give you nutrients and things to help your body function better. So that's why even eating the different colors and eating those foods, even though they don't um, maybe provide you with a ton of calories or energy, they're really, really good for you and they help balance your weight. So if you're um, looking to kind of work on your weight, if you can add more of those non-starchy vegetables, that'll help balance out whatever else you put on your plate. So I just want you to try to look tonight and you know even for lunch and try to ask yourself, is half of what you're eating non-starchy vegetables? And that would be all those things we listed like leafy greens or asparagus or cauliflower or broccoli or cabbage or um, onions. You could have a bunch of mushrooms, okra if you like that, okra and tomatoes. You could do um, jicama, <laughs> things like that. Those um, would balance it out. And so on the left side, that's what they're teaching in school right now. And that's um, typical American plate um, is what we're aiming for. So some fruits, some vegetables, grains, proteins, and dairy. But if you have diabetes, sometimes it can be a little bit too many carbs focusing on that. So just trying to get more of the non-starchy vegetables is the way to go. So I'm just, here's our goal then, is what I want you to do then just is, um, you know, if it's hard to count carbohydrates and things like that, you know, that's not the best for everybody. You're trying to figure out, you know, looking at all the labels, trying to figure out what's what. So just if you try to fill about half of what you're eating with non-starchy vegetables and then fill a fourth of it with something starchy. So that would be like, if you have lasagna noodles, that would be the starchy part, right? And then the meat would be the protein part. That's the one fourth with lean protein. Or if you put, um, yeah, so protein, or if you put tofu in your lasagna, that would be the protein. And then, so things like um, the tomato sauce then, unless it has a lot of um, sugar added, which some of them do now, but tomatoes would be the non-starchy vegetables. And then maybe you could add some more tomatoes or, or more vegetables in your lasagna. Like some people do, instead of the zucchini noodles, they do some, instead of the normal noodles, they do zucchini noodles or eggplant, and those would be non-starchy vegetables. So you see how you could make your lasagna more non-starchy, or you could just have lasagna on one side, like a piece of lasagna on one side of the plate, and then fill the other half with like broccoli or a salad, you know, because you want to balance it out. And then you can substitute also a glass of milk, because that has some carbohydrates, and a piece of fruit. And so say you don't want a piece of fruit, and you don't want um, a glass of milk, Maybe you could just have a little bit more of the lasagna noodles, but I'm having, I'm putting those on your plate because it's important to include them sometimes because they have different nutrients. Okay. So you don't want just lasagna all the time. You need some fruit too. Okay. So here's the plate. You guys got this. So we're going with half non-starchy um, and then some dairy fruit and then lean protein and starch. So you guys got this. Okay. So then um, just talking quick, I know we're, kind of getting off, but just, you know how there's the starchy part of the section, or like I was talking about lasagna noodles. So things that are whole grains, sometimes people, diabetics will ask me, you know, well, why, why do I need to even choose the whole wheat bread? Because they both have the same amount of carbohydrates. And that person, they're right. You know, if you pick up a slice of whole wheat bread and you pick up a slice of white bread, they both say 15 about on there. And you're like, well, what's the point then if I like white bread, why would I even switch the other one? And so the thing the whole grain has, the whole wheat bread or like whole rye or whole wheat pasta or um, like the whole wheat tortillas or even corn tortillas instead of flour tortillas, those things um, have fiber and that would make your blood sugar not go up as much or as fast. So that's why those are good, okay? 
So, you know, things like Rice Krispies and Special K, if you look at the label on those, they're actually not whole grains, you know, so they might make your blood sugar go up a little bit quicker than something like shredded wheat or even things like um, Cheerios because they have um, whole grains in them. So it'd be a little bit slower with those things. So the more fiber you can get, the slower it will go. So that's why it's important. So the more you can do it, you know, sometimes people don't like the whole wheat pasta or whole wheat, uh, you know, brown rice. It does have a nuttier flavor, but you can start by mixing it half and half. I gotta tell you, you know, at, for me, like a while back, I remember my mom switching, even growing up, and I was like, the spaghetti does not taste the same. But they have gotten a lot better at making those whole wheat pastas and different ones actually are different. So if you haven't found yours, I see Barbara nodding, yeah. If you haven't found yours, um, just try a different brand. And also sometimes even mixing them really helps. Like if your spouse is like, no, um, just mixing them, sometimes they won't even know. <laughs> so, okay, so here's some examples. I just wanted to show you quick. So we're almost um, wrapping up, so don't worry guys. Um, so just main things, right? So trying to get half of it non-starchy. And I, I do wanna make sure you guys know you know, you don't have to divide your plate. You can mix it all together in one big like casserole or something like that, right? So you could have like a broccoli and cheese casserole with like some fish on top. You could have a lot of fun. Um, same with the thing on the right side then too. You know, you can do like um, chicken and rice or something like that. And just maybe you could put the vegetable right in there. Just make sure it's half of what you're eating. You know, sometimes people are, you know, they get those like, instant rice things with a little broccoli in there um, and it's probably not half of what you're eating <laughs> and you'd want to add some more broccoli in there so if you have like hamburger helper at night or something like that maybe adding an extra can of vegetables could be just what you need you know um, and maybe you wouldn't even you know the taste would taste great and it would be something you could just have right in the casserole instead of having it on the side okay and so here's some other ideas. So just remembering then the, the one fourth of the plate of the starch, right? And trying to have whole grains most of the time when you can. So those will really help your blood sugar. So somebody asked me once if grits is a whole grain. Usually they're not. You have to look on the back and they can be kind of hard to find, but you can find whole corn ones and that would be a little bit slower. Um, so if you guys like grits, but oatmeal is a whole grain. So is popcorn. You know, if you think about it, popcorn is a whole grain because it's the whole kernel or quinoa is also a whole grain. Um, and barley and buckwheat and bulgur and amaranth and millet. So if you guys have a bird, you can steal some of that. <laughs> so really good for you. Um, and then, so those are some examples there. Okay, and here are some more. So if I, you see on the right side, like what is the starchy food there? So you guys can probably guess it's the potatoes. And then you can see how the people are having like some fruit and milk on the side too. So those would be key. Like, you know, if you're looking for something sweet fruit, oh man, for a diabetic, that would be a great go-to because it's having that fiber too, you know? So that's why it's really good. And then look, you guys, beans, really good for your heart. So those have a ton of fiber. So even though they are starchy, don't forget about having those sometimes too. So, you know, like your chili, if you add extra beans, not only that have a ton of protein and things like that, that'd be good. So speaking of chili, you know, chili, just for an example, right? So chili has meat, so the meat wouldn't raise your blood sugar. If you do just bean chili, the beans would, but they, um, you know, they have that fiber to help. And then tomatoes, which, you know, are often in chili, they wouldn't raise your blood sugar. Um, and so if you could put some like cut up mushrooms or if you could put some vegetables in your chili, just disguise them in there. That would be another way to get more like of that food, not raising your blood sugar and also having less calories. So all those non-starchy vegetables really, you know, um, if you want a huge bowl of chili, if you can fill, you know, a bunch of that with non-starchy vegetables, you know, then you can eat more if you want to feel like, yeah, I can get to eat a lot, you know? So if your spouse is somebody or you, you know, like, and I like to have like big, big salads sometimes and things like that. Um, and it's nice because just, you know, um, you want to try to keep half of those, um, those vegetables 
don't have a lot of calories, so the non-starchy ones. All right. So here, a couple more pictures. I just wanted to kind of show you guys. Like we got the pork chop cornbread there, some potatoes and chicken. And then here, um, I know some people would just like to have like cheese and crackers for lunch or something like that, you know, or you could have that for breakfast, but just trying to balance it out with something else then. The crackers would raise your blood sugar, the cheese would not, and the salad would not. So it's like you're balancing it out and then you could have like that raspberries there. And sometimes people go to like go out to eat or you guys get takeout from a Mexican place. So you gotta be careful with that because just the refried beans, they would have uh, starch, the rice would have starch, tortillas would be starchy carbohydrates. And so you wanna go for the things like the, you know, with, when they have like the bell peppers and the onions or even getting um, some veggies, you know, making sure to have like a little bit of a side salad or something, something like that. You know, usually they have the greens with there. You could ask for the extra, you know, avocados or tomatoes or just some extra sliced vegetables on the side. Um, and then the meats wouldn't raise your blood sugar either. So maybe you could have um, kind of like it on a, instead of so many tortillas, kind of on a salad, Mexican salad. So here's just a class participant after she took a, this class, she sent me a picture of her plate. Um, and so just an example of what she decided to do. And then here are some more, um, just that other people have sent me kind of some ways you can do it. So that's like a big Mexican bowl on the left and then, you know, just chicken vegetables on the right. So just uh, last couple of things. Sometimes people are, you know, like we talked about lasagna a little bit. And so I would just say, you know, try to have something with the lasagna to balance it out, especially if it's at Stouffer's, right? There's a lot of calories in that. So you want to try to balance it out. Um, and if you make it yourself, try to use whole grain noodles um, and add some vegetables in there, add some mushrooms, you know, some slivered carrots, things like that, zucchini, eggplant, you know, people make it out of all different things now. But, you know, sometimes, what about pizza? You know, you just want pizza Friday night. And so the thing is then to just look at your pizza and if it's not filled with half like fruits and vegetables, I would say to try to balance it out with something then. Um, you know, have a salad with it or have some carrot sticks and dip or something like that. Just um, that'll help prevent you, you know, from wanting to have, you know, seven pieces of pizza. So, you know, maybe you could have one or two pieces of pizza and then having something on it. And I um, have um, made a pizza once where I piled so much vegetables on it that it was pretty loaded down and it was soggy on the bottom. But um, it like, it can be done. So you could just add on some vegetables and I would say, you know, something I didn't know until I did that soggy on the bottom pizza. It just, if you can cook your vegetables slightly to get a little of the water out before you add them to the pizza. So you could buy frozen pizza and just, you could stick a couple vegetables in the steamer or the microwave and then add them right onto your pizza there. Um, and they'll blend in right with the cheese. So like some peppers or something like that, but that would help, you know, you get more and help balance your blood sugar just a little bit because those things that you're adding, like mushrooms, peppers, olives, they wouldn't raise your blood sugar. Um, pineapple would, but <laughs> okay. And then what if you want cake? So I would say, you know how we talked about fruit and milk and starchy foods, they all raise your blood sugar. So something like cake, um, that would also help be a starchy thing. So I would say if you're having cake at the end of your meal, it's gonna have like double the sugar as some like uh, rices and things like that. So I would say, you know, really subtract the starchy foods that you're having for that meal. So um, if it's my birthday and I want a big piece of cake, you know, maybe I should avoid the stuffing and the rice and the juice or the sweet tea, you know, definitely go with water all the time or milk, um, but just really trying to um, think about those things and balance it out then by the meal. And also like throughout your day. So I always use this, but I, I don't know, it helped me when somebody told me once. So it's like a diabetic, you could give them a whole piece of cake, right? Or a whole cake. Um, somebody without diabetes could eat that entire chocolate cake and your body would know what to do with it. You know, your blood sugar wouldn't go skyrocketing crazy and you'd be able to manage it. But if you have diabetes and you wanna eat that whole cake, it'd be better for you to just eat it throughout the day in small amounts. So that would keep your blood sugar more even. So I hope that makes sense. So it's just like the more 
throughout your day you can have it the better off you are so you know if you're gonna have a piece of cake maybe just having a small bites over the day make sure you brush your teeth in between um, maybe that would be good and then so if um, yeah I just wanted to address the desserts a little bit and so sometimes people are like well I'm not I don't want to have vegetables for breakfast and you don't have to but you can um, and that will help balance out your blood sugar sometimes too. And you can skip those if you want, and then just making sure to try to get some protein for sure, and uh, some fiber would be great. So proteins would be like the maybe the turkey, the eggs, maybe a little piece of cheese, some fish. You can have fish in the morning. A lot of cultures do that, um, things like that, and the non-starchy vegetables. But I just wanted to show some pictures of some ways where you could actually have it. All right, I think we're on like maybe the second to last slide or the last slide. So just uh, quick examples here. Um, if you were to have this meal, right? So which of these foods have carbohydrates, right? So um, if you guys have access to the chat box or I, uh, um, I can try to unmute you all too, that would be, let's see here. So you can unmute yourself if you'd like and talk, but which foods would have carbohydrates? So beans and tortillas, she said, yep, you got it. Yep, the beans and the shells. So you're right, that seasoning would not raise your blood sugar. Bell peppers wouldn't, um, like the olives wouldn't, the cheese wouldn't, the taco sauce wouldn't, and either with the sour cream. Yeah, you guys got it. Thank you, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's move it on here. So just example then, trying to create your plate. So just trying to think about these things then and thinking about what you might have for lunch tonight and trying to balance it out would be really good. So I guess, um, you know, trying to have, you know, the non-starchy things on one side and, you know, or mixing it up in a bowl so that you could just have non-starchy or the meats, you know, things that won't raise your blood sugar, just half of your plate and this will help keep your blood sugar even. So if you can try to do this in all your meals and snacks, so maybe you have a little bit of carbohydrate and a little bit of something else in a snack, or kind of have like mini meals, and then that can help keep your blood sugar even over time. So that's what I have for you today, and I saw there was a question, so I'll get to that one. Um, just wanted to say I'll send you an evaluation right after this, or I'll do my best here, um, and I would really love your feedback. So. You guys can help me be better um, if I can ever get your attention again. And then here are some of the classes I'll have coming up and I can send these to you too. A lot of you might have seen this flyer, but it's just um, some different ones. I have one on Alzheimer's coming up um, and cooking like the electric, uh, electric uh, Instapot, I couldn't think of the name. So cooking with that, um, if you're interested in, if you know someone who is vegetarian or vegan and you're trying to figure out what to cook for them, we have one coming up on that and then growing and cooking herbs. And then I have a new one called Hacking Meal Planning. And so this one will be fun. So it's a two part series and they're just 20 minutes each or less. And so it's just I'm um, trying to get some meal plans um, figured out so you make it easier for you. And so if anybody has any questions then they can just type it in the chat box there. So yeah, Hillary said she already registered. Woo -hoo. Okay, so then. Um, just going up, Bonnie asked about helpful herbs such as cinnamon and turmeric. You know, it does look like that cinnamon can help the, with the blood sugar stabilization. They did some, um, some tests, I guess, with people who had it in their oatmeal in the morning, and they found that it stabilized the blood sugar more um, than the people who had this without the cinnamon. So yeah, just put it in the cinnamon and stuff, um, and it definitely can't hurt you. There's no calories, and we know that cinnamon does have other good properties. So I would say give it a shot for sure. And turmeric can be good for multiple things. Um, so choosing that one's not bad. And cinnamon can be really good in tacos. It kind of brings out that meatiness. So just another idea, I guess. Okay, let me see if there's anything you guys said here. Well, the recording, yes, yes, I'll get that recording to you guys. When choosing apples, do green apples have less sugar than red and golden? You know, not in general. No, they are tartar, I know, but I don't think um, very, no. 
um, not enough to matter anyway. And so I would say the big thing about apples would be eating that peel. And that is huge if you can do that. And that, that was a good question though. It's like they should, right? Um, and then can you go back um, the last slide, please? I wonder, you know, which slide um, were you talking about this one maybe? Um, Rose just asked about the last slide. Okay. Thanks, Barbara. Okay. Yeah, no, I wouldn't mind about posting the link. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, so um, Caroline is saying there's a link in the box now um, with a UF wellness video on preventing type 2 diabetes. So that'd be really cool. Hear that blueberries? Oh, blueberries. They're so good for everything. You know, I do that Alzheimer's class and they're huge with that. So if you're looking to remember something, um, hit up those blueberries. They're also, yeah, they're one of the better fruits for blood sugar. Blueberries and strawberries are. So if you like the berries. So does anybody else have any questions? I really appreciate you all. I'm glad you guys came. All right. Well, that's it and a happy Friday, okay? Um, go celebrate Pink Flamingo Day. We'll have a, yeah, good weekend, okay? So take care of you guys and I hope to see you on the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you guys. See your chat, thanks.